Hello, and welcome to the Sunless Citadel, which is from the classic module Tales from the Yawning Portal. Um, I am Even Note. had to stop and think of my own name there, and I will be your DM tonight. And before we get underway, I would like to give a shout out to our awesome sponsor, Fantasy Grounds, whose software you're about to see in action. And with Fantasy Grounds, it makes it really easy to create and run your own campaigns, whether you're running something like a, a prepackaged module such as this, or a homebrew, you've got all different, you know, D&D editions, uh, Pathfinder, other things I've never even heard of that are available. I had not DM'd in many, many years, but I played in a couple of Fantasy Grounds campaign uh, just as a player, and I liked it so much I decided to give it a try, and here we are. This is my first time running an actual packaged module rather than a homebrew, and I've only run a few of those, so, uh... If I take a few small liberties, go easy on me. I'm aiming for no more than two, two and a half hours for tonight's session so that I can take a little break and maybe get streaming with even over with. And let's see. That's pretty much it for that. Uh, the Sunless Citadel was written by Bruce R. Cordell and published in the year 2000. It was the first published adventure for AD&D 3rd edition, although we are running it in 5th edition. It's designed for 4 or 5 level 1 players who should progress to level 2 or 3 by the end of the adventure. And luckily, I have managed to find a few such players willing to take on this daunting task. I will let each of them introduce themselves and tell you a bit about their characters. Who wants to go first? Oh, I suppose I can go. Comic Relief! Hello. Hello, this is Comic Relief coming at you from inside your viewing device. So I am playing Finnegan O'Shaughnessy, who is a rogue. And, you know, I was, I was actually kind of waiting for um, even enough to say that she found some uh, victims or, you know, volunteers for, for playing here. But Victims, volunteers. It's all the same to me. Tomato, tomato. Exactly. All right, I can go next. Uh, this is Jerry, a.k.a. Cordovan, a.k.a. Saiten Tasta Bernay, but you burn one loaf of bread while an outlander at a enemy camp, and you're forever branded Saiten Toast Burner, or Satan Toast Burner, depending on which region you might be in. He is a level one ranger. An outlander forest gnome. Okay. I'll jump in next. This is Thalgren playing the role of Dorian Elliot, a half elf outlander barbarian who sincerely believes he was led raised by extra planar aliens. <laughs> I, I was that. waiting for the first big plot twist. You seem like an interesting person. <laughs> oh, is that? Uh, is unless Vulcan has now? something else to say about uh, about Dorian, then it is Bonnie's turn. I am Bonnie View, and I'm playing Mouse Pouch Full Belly, or Bella for short. She's a Tabaxi Druid, and she kind of has a sailor background. She's a beachcomber kitty. And, Every cute uh, kitty. Yes, she loves the, the sun and the sea and the sand. And, and long she, walks on the beach. Long walks on the beach, and she loves meeting new people, so it's great to be here with you lovely, lovely folk. Oh, wait, is this d, &D she, or Tinder? Is she actually a cat? She's a tabaxi, so she's kind of a cat. Yep, a uh, cat humanoid type thing. Mm -hmm. Like an upright, kind of like um, cat on Red Dwarf. Think Khajiit. Yeah, I need to hand him my nerd card. I have no idea what you're talking about. And Lord Silverhand, who will be typing. I don't know if uh, Tholgren, as in Kobold Kindergarten, is going to read aloud for him or not. Well, sure, why not? Pretty sure I got banned after the first time I read his background. <laughs> yeah, but if he's not using a mic, what's he going to do? Well, just in case for some reason Twitch chat is not showing up on here, and Twitch chat is not showing up on here, hang on a sec, I can make it show up on here, maybe. 
Oh, no, I can't. Well, Lord Silverhand uh, says, this is Lord Silverhand without voice playing Kirky or Kirk? We're going to call it Kirk. Kirk, a half-elf CN sorcerer, oh, chaotic neutral sorcerer with the green dragon bloodline who fled his school under mysterious circumstances nobody knows, including the player. Ah, Kirk like and James P. Excellent. Dropping my phone, which is not good since I've got Twitch chat, or yes, Twitch chat up on it. So our gang here has gathered at the yawning portal because, well, I don't know what has brought them all here, so why don't we hear it from them? Uh, how did you get here? How do you know each other? Do you already know each other? Are you just meeting here? If you are already acquainted, why don't you tell us how? Well, well I, I think it's... Sorry, go ahead. You go. Oh. <laughs> I was on the vessel that just recently arrived into port, and I've heard that the Yawning Portal is a fine establishment to hear grand stories and meet new people, and I really want to do that before I head out of town and, you know, seek the shore. Did you say seek the shore? Yeah. Okay. I was just heading wondering out, Heading it, outdoors before it, I, I, I sack it in for the night. It kind of cut off when you were almost through the word shore, so I just wanted to make make sure. Sure about the shore? Sure, sure about the shore. Uh, do you know any of these other scalawags? Well, I've just met them, and I think they're all wonderful. I love meeting new people, and, and they're certainly new people. All right, so uh, Saiten uh, is an outlander. He basically is from the far reaches. Uh, by the way, if you load the player's handbook to Lux into this module, I can get the information on it. Oh, or maybe player's I need to load handbook it. Deluxe? I don't know if I have the deluxe one. I have the player's handbook loaded. I do not. Oh, I think I need to load it on my end. I think yeah, it's I don't fault. have deluxe. Yeah. I, 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 I think it's just player. I think it's just a player's handbook, but they call it player's handbook deluxe to, to, to kind yeah. of uh, differentiate. Either way, I'm an outlander. The, so yeah, basically, sorry. you know, an outlander is someone who is from the far edges of civilization, um, almost tribal in nature to some extent. Uh, I am a forest gnome, so I am basically from the woods. And long ago, due to the ravages of armies and marches of war and all that sort of thing, I ended up getting taken prisoner and brought into a camp, at which point I really became just kind of a camp cook for whatever mercenary group or people I happen to be with. I am also a tracker of sorts and a hunter and a, uh, a person who's talented in the woods. I do have dark vision, so I have usefulness there as well. But I've largely been a, like I said, a camp cook, except not necessarily a particularly good one. So when we get near towns like this, uh, for they decide to give me a break and give me some coin to purchase food to bring back to the camp. Um, I, it sure is nice of them that they don't have to eat my food. And uh, so that's what brings me to the yawning point here is to purchase a, a whole basically uh, cauldron full of soup that is then going to be brought back to camp for the evening. And you can dip your burnt toast in the soup? Yep. And because cool. of who I am, I'm basically a wanderer. So I am o always open to meeting new people and changing direction and changing course. I Strangely, they were like, you know, they've been encouraging that lately in the camp that I've been at. So uh, perhaps it's time to move. Well met. There's no point in letting ties hold you, hold you back or hold you down. If there's a new opportunity, you should just follow where it leads. Yes, exactly. And have you already met any of these fine people before, or is this you're just meeting uh, now? No, for the first but I, time? I too have been. Uh, I find a tabaxi something I've never heard of before, and so I am very curious to learn more. And uh, it, I'm sorry, did you say is a she? She's a she. Okay. I'm a she. Yeah, she's very friendly, and uh, so we've been striking it up and having a having a good time talking about basically things that we like to eat. You know, basic stuff that you do before you get to know someone. You know. Oh no, if you guys are going to 
talk about things you like to eat when Bulgren gets around to doing this. We're going to be here all night. <laughs> I'm wrong character. Wrong character. I, I come from a far off land called uh, Mastica, and there they do have particular chiles called chipotle. Quite <laughs> nice. Oh no, don't get them started. Please tell me I wasn't the only one who just tried to go men at work and. I come from a land down under, yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> I, I come from. I was like, yeah, don't under, please say it. It says, no. uh, according I... to the of official fifth edition character description, I have witnessed the migration of herds larger than forests, survived weather more extreme than any city dweller could comprehend, and enjoyed the solitude of being the only thinking creature for miles in any direction. The wilds are in my blood, etc. So I see a talking cat like thing, and I'm interested. Well, the irony is, I am also an outlander, but for a very different, uh, which may come to light later. We'll find out. All right. But uh, effectively, not an exile by choice. Well, no one really is. So just kind of wandered his way around, found the yawning portal. And, you know, after visiting a couple of other pubs in, in the city where the, apparently the beer is served out of a bucket near the um decided to go to a venue where it's not served from a bucket and have something that actually tastes and look at lo and behold there's a talking cat <laughs> ahoy if, oh if only the internet existed in the forgotten realms that's right well, I'm going to say, since my background is an entertainer, that I came to the Yawning Portal to do some performance, and one of my features is by popular demand, and it says, you can always find a place to perform, usually in an inn or tavern, but possibly within a circus, at a theater, or even in a noble's court. At such a place, you receive free lodging and food for a modest or comfortable standard, as long as you perform each night. Very interesting, and I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and for anyone who is having, I don't know how, if anyone is reading on a phone, I don't, I put Twitch chat on here, and for some reason it's not working, even though I used the right one, I'm sure I did, but anyway, uh, Kirk, as in Captain, is at the tavern because taverns are a great place to get ale and maybe find a way to earn a little gold. And talking cats are really freaking cool to chat with. That's very nice of you to say so. It would so, make sense that a tabaxi might well attract a crowd in a tavern, so. so, or so pretty Bonnie, much did anywhere you, else. <laughs> did, did you think about uh, the, the, the side effect of having your, your character be pretty much the linchpin for our party getting together? <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Oh, no, I didn't really think about that. But isn't she always? But if that's the way that it works, I mean, that's lovely. That's great. So if we're the A team, she's meow face. <laughs> so, Bella, I'm curious. What is it that you're looking for? Oh, I just wanted to see new places. I've never been to Waterdeep before. I've sailed all over this land around the shore and stopped at many ports but this is the first time that i've been in this grand city i love to i love to visit new places okay um, i am currently with an army a mercenary group but uh that could change if anyone has missions to do especially if you need a cook i have been told i am very good at cooking are you good with Thanks. fish I, I've been told that I've been able to black, I mean, um, <laughs> cook a few fish. Yeah. Do you like raw fish? I like raw fish sometimes. You know, if you loved raw fish, that'd be fantastic. You don't even need to cook raw fish, do you? No, you don't. That's why it's raw. You and I should get together. <laughs> this sounds good. We have a new group that could well be forming around this. I don't know. I think people are going to start shipping Bella and Slayton. <laughs> <laughs> Right, that, that's, sushi our new, savages. that's our new name. We're now the Sushi Savages. <laughs> She's looking Group to name. bless the rains down in... <laughs> uh, bless the rains down in Mastica. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, man. Okay, so you are all here at the awning portal. 
and you've introduced yourselves and gotten Excuse fascinated. Me. Jesus, is that boring already? <laughs> gotten fascinated by the fact that uh, we have this Catwoman type here. While enjoying the comforts of the yawning portal, you overhear the proprietor, a man named Dernan. And that's just a little quote from the module up on that splash screen, which you guys shouldn't be seeing because you should only be watching regular chat and not the whole stream. Anyway, he's talking to an older woman whom he called Carolyn, who for some reason does not have an NPC portrait anywhere in the Fantasy Grounds library, which makes me sad. Carolyn was lamenting the disappearance of her son and daughter, and they should have a pronunciation guide for this too, Talgen and Sharwin Hukreli? I don't know. Close enough. And seemed puzzled that no one had yet taken her up on her offer of salvage rights to any team who could find and return with the siblings, or at least the gold signet rings they both wore. Honestly, Dernan, I don't understand, they heard her say. Why, 125 gold for each ring to each adventurer who can bring back the rings, and double that if they return my son and daughter in good shape? That's a small fortune. Why isn't anyone trying to find them? Dernan, a man of few words, had shrugged. It's a cruel world. All people have to fend for themselves. <clears throat> exactly, Carolyn interrupted. And one could do a great deal of fending with 125 gold. What about you? Surely you could use the money. There was no sympathy in Dernan's voice as he replied, This place is my home. My friends and family are long gone. I love this place, but I try not to get attached to the people here. I'll outlive them all. Lucky me. I'll admit I'm more than a bit fond of gold, but not so fond as to risk my place here to go chasing after a couple wayward kids. At this, Lady Hukreli had slammed a gold piece down on the bar and left. Dernan, watching her go, had caught sight of you guys, all of whom are rather obviously eavesdropping. Like gold, do you? Well, I can tell you a bit more about the Lady Hukreli and her rescue mission. For a price, of course. What say you, adventurers? Uh, well, Dorian there is uh, about as subtle and as eavesdropping as, as uh, it can get. You know, he's he's leaning his head out to one side, got his ear perked out like a radar beam. Like, mm -hmm. Durden's been around a very, very, very long time, and you're not putting anything over on him. He knows you're all listening. These young people are missing. It sounds like they must be having a grand adventure. I'm so excited for them. Well, I mean, you, you know, you've got their mother offering a reward for them. She seems pretty worried, and basically the reward is for either the, the son and daughter or just the signet rings they wore, which sounds like she is, you know, at least considering the possibility that something really, really bad has happened to them. Or she just likes to accessorize. <laughs> I like to accessorize. And and Bella holds out. She has a shell necklace and she shakes it. It makes a little <laughs> rattling noise. Oh, please tell me it's not a puka shell necklace. <laughs> it is a puka shell necklace, by the way. <laughs> no! See, I'm just sitting here thinking, or Dorian's sitting here thinking, even if they're already dead, a couple of wilderness types, you know, like Saitan and myself, could go out there, score the rings, bring them back. 125 gold, that supplies for, like, three years. Like, that is 125 yeah. for each person in the party yeah, who brings so back the rings. That is If it seems appropriate, lot. I'm going to kind of, hat in hand, come up to the lady and say, I could not help but overhearing the lady. No, she slammed uh, down when he said he didn't have, when uh, Dernan said he didn't, wasn't going to risk his place here to go chasing after a couple of kids, she slammed her the gold for her drink down on the bar and left. Oh. Oh. Uh, well, children can go anywhere. Well, they're not children, they're her son and daughter, and Dernan's calling them kids, but they are young adults. But they could still go anywhere, especially if their legs are longer. Well, I'm sorry, you know, did you say the bartender's name was? Dernan. Would it and be appropriate? Okay, so if it's okay, I'm going to go up to Dernan. And pre presumably I at least slightly know Dernan because I am ordering, after all, an entire cauldron of soup from his tavern. And I'm going to say, Dernan, 
Hopefully your soup will be better than your manners. <laughs> oh. Now remember, Dernan just said to you, you like gold? Well, he can tell you a bit more about the lady who curly and her rescue mission for a price. Do you really want to insult him? Well, I'm not necessarily insulting him. I'm basically saying, hey, you were being too harsh on that lady. And perhaps we know each other enough that he would understand that. Well, I'll take ten gold right now for the information, or five gold now and 20% of everything your party gets if you make it back. How's my soup coming along? <laughs> <laughs> I think that seems really fair because we don't really have anything except for what we have on us and if we came back and we only wanted 20%, that would be like um, ooh, 100 gold more than we have now. Yeah, and as gold. Bella well, said, I'm, they I'm could be anywhere. On. But let's 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 put our heads together and let's figure out how much gold we've got together. And, and you know, it's it's basically two gold a piece. I'm okay with two gold a piece, but ten gold is literally my entire bankroll right so now. It, it would one. be two gold a piece, or well, I mean, she just stormed into the tavern. Someone could go after her. Yeah, and, no, I, I I say we, if we can, let's just pool two gold a piece. And if somebody's short, maybe somebody else confront them. You know, depending on you know. Well, you have two options, that. either uh, assuming you want to pay him for the information, two gold a piece now, or I one just... gold a piece now, and 20% of anything you bring back. Oh, hell I just no. came it'd into be, it'd, be, it'd, be two gold po it'd be two gold a piece up front, and not, I wouldn't want to do anything uh, in the future. It's just right, right. Yeah, I just yeah, came it, into port, and I have all my wages from, from the last shipment, so I have 10 gold. They can have all this gold. I don't need gold. What do I need gold for? Uh, I just made Dorian Boy, roll an intelligence like check. You. Yeah, he, 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 he's no. I'm not doing anything with a cut. No, it's a flat amount. That's it. Well, there, uh, there will there will be no cut. Bella just said she's got ten gold. He can have her, and that was ten gold for the entire party. So that she just covered your two gold apiece. So okay, okay. But I'm curious, where could these children or these young people be? Because they could go out to the sea. I'm okay, you know, lady, when you when paid me the damn gold. If you're not gonna shut up, I'm not gonna be able to tell you. <laughs> Golly. Darn is a taciturn fella. Okay. Head to the town of Oakhurst. That's the last place, well, the last civilized place that Lady Hucrelli's son and daughter were seen. They bought supplies at the general store, owned by their mother, not that she's ever there much, and a couple of the locals said they were headed to a place called the Sunless Citadel. That was about a month ago. No one's seen them since. There were a couple of others who disappeared at the same time. Carrick is the ranger, he's a local, and some stranger named Sir Brafford or something like that. Heard he was a paladin. Might have been from Pelor. Sorry, wait, wait, what, what, what was the first name? Sir. It kind of I, I don't know his first name. He went by Sir no, Brafford. No, no, the name before Brafford was Caris. Caracas. Caracas. Don't ask me to spell it. I don't bother myself with such things. Then there was the paladin. He was from uh, Pelor, I think they said. He had some kind of unusual sword, some kind of magical sword. Didn't never saw it myself, but people sure were talking about it. So the citadel is about seven miles from Oakhurst, if you follow the old ro old road. Lots of kobolds and goblins there. In the citadel, that is. Old road. Heaven knows what you might find there. Cool. So, they want to stock up on supplies or whatnot and head on out or what? I'm still waiting on my soup. <laughs> All right. It's a cauldron here's... of soup. I need a cauldron of soup to give to here's my. Here's damn uh... soup. If you spill it, it's on your own head. That'll be too So, gold. it's a gigantic cauldron of soup. And my strength is 12, so I can lift quite a bit. But there are a couple of other people from the mercenary group behind me that are also in the tavern they were waiting to help me carry it and oh. so i convinced both of them to actually start lifting it up just to see if it would be balanced and then i stopped carrying it and then they walked away 
Okay, wait a minute. They were lifting it up, and then you stopped carrying it, and then they walked away? Where did <clears> so I was you? supposed to carry it, but I'm a little forest gnome with the strength of 12. So I got the two mercenaries who were with me to kind of lift it up for balance as a test, and then I just sort of walked away. Uh, and they walked out the door with it. That so, way we so don't basically... have to have an entire cauldron of soup along with us for today's journey. Yeah, you're going to have a hard time carrying that around the Sunless Citadel. Got some pretty, pretty steep climbs. Both yeah, no, that's, that's, that's what he's saying. He, he, he had to go out and buy food for his company, so these two mercenaries are taking the soup back to his company, and now he's free to go off to the Sunless Citadel. Exactly. And that wraps up my tenure with that group of truly horrid people. You guys seem nice. Let's let's work <laughs> together and get rich. Okay, so Dermot sure, 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 sure. is going to, and I'm just going to go ahead and. Uh, oh, you actually have to get to the old road. There's actually not a map of the old road, and I have looked everywhere through here. So let me see if I can find a generic map that might work. I was looking earlier, and I really didn't see much. So I take it this village of yeah. Oakhurst is inland? Yeah, I'm not sure where you got the idea this was anywhere near the ocean or water deep or anywhere else. Uh, Oakhurst, yeah, there's, there's like, yeah. Wow. I've never been very far inland. I usually just stick to the shore. This is going to be fascinating. Well, you could end up falling in a pit of water. That'll be about as close as you get to the shore. Well, I mean, water deeps on the ocean. I'm close now. Maybe I don't know why you keep saying water deep, because that's not where you are. Well, the Yanni portal is in... Okay. Do Dorian or Shaitan with the Outlander Explorer background have any idea where Oakhurst is? No, not really. As far as I know, it's just a little town somewhere along the uh, way. Oakhurst is actually right outside, and then you take the old road to get to the Sunless Citadel, which is about seven miles. Oh, so Oakhurst is there. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm going to... There's no map or anything to tell me otherwise so you know oakhurst is a good refuel top up everything type of you know split your soup and do smaller containers to make it easier to carry type of place no no it's going back to the camp the mercenary camp they're carrying it back to the mercenary camp oh now i get it okay i i thought you just really really liked soup <laughs> i no. have this vision of you like trying to fit some whatever we get near a town they decide they would rather get soup and haul it in than risk my cooking and so they they give me the Got day it. off which is awful nice of them i just had this vision yep. of you this little gnome trying to put a spill proof lid on this cauldron this ginormous cauldron of soup and like haul it up and down the dungeon <laughs> that is a pretty great idea but uh, uh, i kind of yeah. want to like like have a graphic of that darn it <laughs> yeah sadly the soup I... chronicles they'll call it <laughs> there songs go. Yeah. There's nothing preventing him from trying to make soup in camp. Well, you know, they, hey, I that is how I make my way around is as sort of the camp chef and all that sort of thing, the cook. And uh, you too can experience it. Okay, so you are, it is, I'm going to say, uh, we are in the winter about this time of year and i'm saying you are going to uh this is about noon when you arrive in oakhurst okay so he he Dernan mentioned that the lady ran the local store so i say we stop in there and check in with her and find out if she can give us any more information than what Dern knows he said she owns the local store not that she's ever there much Okay, well then, you know, the, the, whoever's there hopefully would tell us where she Oh, they might, but remember they're her employees, so we'll see. I do wish there were a couple more maps that were included with this. Have you checked the appendices from the published 
in uh, Fantasy Grounds that might have some more maps for you. Yep, I am looking at all of the maps, and none of them really have... I've got some battle maps and some battle maps in caves, a couple of outdoor maps, and a map that I can't show you yet. One of the things I've done is I've actually created a folder and images and maps of like some generic ones like tavern, roadside camp, things like that, that you can just kind of pull from. It takes a little doing, but it's maybe worth doing. Yeah, it's like I'm used to Cobalt Kindergarten where I just like uh, mm -hmm. do all the maps and graphics I need myself when I, <laughs> when I have time. So let's just, I'll tell you what, let's just use a battle map. Let's see battle map. This is not the greatest map, but it will kind of do. So we're going to say upper right is a small tavern, upper left is a general store. Bottom left is a shrine, and bottom right is a, I don't know, blacksmith. Alright. Uh, who wants to so the You should probably uh, even drag us from the upper left of the screen onto the party sheet. I think that would probably that be a good time to do that. That has already been done. Oh, really? Why have mm -hmm. I not seen that? Uh, Are we still loading? On the order tab? Yeah, the I part. see me on the order tab. Oh, I see in the order tab. Uh... Oh, in the order tab. Yeah, <coughs> yeah I see you all. Sorry. The... Okay, yeah. Well, I can just I see like, drag there. you over here and you can just like, put okay. yourself in whatever yeah. order. I will give you this for free. You're not going to... Unless you say something to convince me. Otherwise, I have no encounters planned for in within the town itself. Well, that's fine. Like I said, I could definitely be persuaded otherwise. So, well, Dorian then is going to go head up over to the, the general store since she said that they... Before they left, they bought supplies at a general. So, yep. even though if it's a month old lead, eh, maybe we'll get something. Who knows? No, I I agree. And uh, since their mother owned the store, we, if she's not there, we can talk to the proprietor, or the uh, person on staff, and see what they can tell us about where she lives, so we can go talk to her. And I'm just going to use some generic NPCs because that's what I got. I think there's going to be a bugbear working at the general store. So, oh, might help to share him. There you go, one bugbear in the general store. With or without angry maze? Uh, that's actually something he uses to reach the items on the high shelves. Maybe he's demonstrating gotcha. the wares. <laughs> that is one you way can to use stop this to smash heads. That is one way to stop people from trying to haggle. All right, so I'm going to go up to the bartender there, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry. What was the name of the lady we're looking for? Lady Hukreli. I have no idea if that's the way I'm supposed to be saying it or not. Oh, do we know who we're supposed to be rescuing? Like the names of the two kids? No, we don't yeah, know that. Yet. Yes. No, no, we do. no, we do. It, it's it's like Calgan and Charwin. So. Yeah. Uh, actually, let me find it because now, I'm, yeah, Talgan and Charwin. Um, Talgan with a T. Okay. T A L G E N. Yeah, I got that. And Charwin like the toilet paper. S H A R W Y N. Going to go up to the proprietor of the bar and say, fine, proprietor, I'm looking for um, Ulithera. Okay, the proprietor of the bar. Whoops, wrong one. Start. Why is this not... Ah, what have I done? 
Okay, let me try this again. Huh. This is not... Oh, I see what I'm doing. Oh, that's a hobgoblin. I need a bugbear. Okay. That's already being shared. And then we need a kobold. I said we of need a kobold. Of course there's a kobold. Kobold is in the tavern. Tavern or store? The bugbear is in the store. The kobold is in the tavern. Okay, so Dorian and I are in the store. I'm not sure where Saiten is. Oh, I said I was going to the tavern, but maybe that was the wrong place to go. Well, either way, I'm going and I'm asking about Ulithera. Okay, you're go now which one are you are you all the tavern. You're going to the tavern. Okay, that is with the kobold. Yep. Basically we're gonna spread out or at least that's what I'm gonna do, is start spreading out and asking about Ulithera. That is the correct name, right? Ulithera? The Anyways. the lady's name. Oh yeah. Ukreli. Ukreli, 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 Ukreli. H-U-C-R-E-L-E. -E. I have no idea if that's... Ukreli. Oh, so I'm going to be asking about Ukreli. Yeah, Ukreli. the tavern. Yes. And basically just kind of sort of, you know, make my presence known and be like, hello, fine proprietor. I am seeking a Ukreli who we've been tasked to speak with. And you are in the tavern. You know where I could contact her? You talk about Lady Ukreli? Yes. She owns store. She not have anything to do with tavern. I understand that she was perhaps not there, so I thought maybe heading next door might be a place that she would go. Oh, she too good to come in here. She rich. I see. Okay, well, if you happen to see her, let her know I'm looking for her. Ha! She not talk to Kobold. I have learned much today, fine kobold. Be well, and perhaps I will stop by soon. I'll put a copper. I don't really have any money, but I'll put like a copper or something on the oh, counter for us. Little shiny, so. okay. Little shiny, better than no shiny. <laughs> All right, that's it then. I'll join the rest of the group. Okay, and I tried to drag you onto the map here, but it wouldn't let me. So. I think you need to add the grid to the map first. Oh, that is probably it. Probably such a pain. Eh, it's a little off, but not yeah. combat. So, and I keep, uh, I keep trying to zoom and unzoom using the Photoshop method. Me the Photoshop method. Okay, so everybody is... Are, can I assume you are all over here at the uh, general store? Sure. That's where I'm at. Indeed. Sure, sure. Nope, it's still not letting me drag you on there. Oh, I wonder if I need to put you on the combat tracker. Maybe that's what... Yeah, for. probably. Yeah. Let's see. Now can you drag us to the map? Yeah, I dragged... Drug that <laughs> dragged it. <laughs> I can't talk. Uh, you drugged me twice, huh? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I keep reading that as moose pouch, by the way. <laughs> that was It'd be hard to fit a moose in my belly. Mouse is much more reasonable. Yes. Okay, so you got the bug beer, bug, bug bear proprietor here. What can I do you for? That's my interpretation of how bugbears talk. Someone else should have probably taken over because I was talking to some the bartender. Yep. Well, I'm going to go. We have a sorcerer and a tabaxi who probably both have better charisma than the barbarian. Just going to stand behind here and pretend I'm not picking my nose. Uh... I can see what you're doing. I'm a bugbear, so anytime you want to share, hit me up. <laughs> Just walk over and, like, hand it to him, like, here you go. Okay. First one's free. Oh, 
Okay, what you need to know. <laughs> well, okay, that was interesting interspecies relationship. All right, let's let's roll with that. <laughs> roll with it. Go for roll it. with it. Okay. I love the spontaneous uh, stuff that happens in D and D. I think he likes you. Crelly, or Crelly. We're looking for uh, Lady Crelly. Some... Yeah, she's my boss. I think I've only ever met her once or twice, though. Yeah, we heard some of her kids had gone missing, and we're trying. Oh we're trying yeah. Trying to track them down. Yeah. Palgan and Sharwin. Yeah, they they had it off to the Sunless Citadel about a month or so ago. That was the last time I saw them. Sunless, I've heard that a couple times now, Sunless Citadel. What is that? Nobody really knows why it's called that. I mean, I guess it's a citadel and it doesn't get sun, right? So I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it is. I mean, not that there aren't some the rumors. The sun or the citadel? Hey, don't insult my citadel. intelligence there. <laughs> no one knows for sure what the Sunless Citadel once was, but... I've heard this legend that it once served as the retreat of an ancient dragon cult. You know, you never know if these old legends are real or not, though. Well, that sure sounds kind of... Uh... Why would they go there? Hey, I didn't ask them why they were going. Well, uh, we heard they bought some stuff here. Well, yeah, you gotta stock up before you go to a place like that. Okay, no, better question. It's like did walking they... down the main street in town, you know? Well, did they take something, did they get some smart things, like some food and ropes and tarps and stuff? Oh, yeah, they got food and ropes and torches, lots of, lots of torches. I mean, lots of torches. So they weren't completely stupid? Oh, no, they, they're, they're decently bright kids, I guess. I mean, I wouldn't call them stupid. Are they the adventuring type in general? Well, they, I mean, they were, I mean, they were adults, but they were young, you know? So they were probably just looking to really, you know, break out, do something. I'm sure old lady who, I mean, I'm sure lady who Corelli rules them with an iron fist, that one. So probably just Kirk wanted wants... a little bit of adventure. Kirk wants to know how much food they get, and that for for a month, a week, how much? Oh, maybe a week or two. I don't think they would have had enough for a month, but, you know, maybe they were planning, there's it's like seven miles from here to the Citadel, I don't know if they were planning to hunt at all. Not that there's much there to hunt lately. So if we do find these children for Lady Ucrelli, do we bring them back here? Well, you bring them back here, but, I mean, best place to go would probably be back to the Yawning Portal. Guy there named Dernan runs the place, and nobody ever really knows where to find Lady Hukreli. She likes to kind of keep to herself a lot. She's kind of a bit too good for the rest of us, if you know what I mean. But the Yawning Portal's the one place she sometimes goes when she feels the need to, you know, have a nip, socialize a little. You know, beneath herself, I'm sure, but... You well, gotta if have you see Lady Ucrelli, let her know that we are children. Yeah, well, if I see her, I could try to tell her, but I doubt she'd listen to anything I'd say. Yeah, you... you just let Lady Ukulele know that we're on the job. Maybe if you told Wait, are you her bored? We're, we're seeking out her lost signet rings, she'd be more attentive. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she did put a big stock by those rings. I mean, big old gold rings, too. Why, who really, girl, her little skinny fingers, I'm surprised they could support the weight of those things. My. Okay. So, um, I turn to the group. Do we need torches? Yeah, Are you I planning on going torches. to the Citadel? That sounds the like that's... Yeah, I'd say you need torches. Sounds like that's where we're going. I can I can say that we could probably use some torches, maybe even a few more rats, rations, you know, whatnot. And, uh, Wait, yeah, what, rats or rations like... or rat rations? Because I got them all, you know. Yes. Oh, I like exactly. rats. Yeah, rats are rations. 
anyways, um, and then it uh, doesn't sound like we're going to get much more information, so we can head on down once we stock it. And by the way, um, when people are kind of looking at gear and we're doing our gear talk, stocking up for that, uh, one of you, at least one of you, notices that I have some manacles on my person. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Well, Manical. I mean, I think your your opportunity nope. for that is coming up because you're about to stock up on gear, so I'm sure you're going to be getting your backpacks out and, you know, making sure everything's packed neatly. It mm -hmm. might be a handy-dandy kitchen tool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to judge. Yeah. <laughs> Kirk says, hey, whatever floats your boat, I'm not going to judge. Si All right, so you know how much how many how much rations do you think we want to take, and how many torches do you think we want? Well, I got ten torches that I have no intention of using because I have I ten torches. as well. But at least I will buy ten if we're buying now. Actually, who doesn't have dark vision here? Actually, only Finnegan does I... not have dark vision. So there's always one. <laughs> I always. have some torches as well, you know. So while all of us have ten torches, we'll just hand over to, to, to Finnegan. Like, here you go. Here's here's. Well, no, we can we can use I torches. I can carry too. mine for him. Uh, it's like you said dark, for torch dark light, vision, you'll, you'll be to... you'll be fine if you got dark vision. But man, there's something to be said though for having torches as well as dark vision. As long as it's... I can juggle them now and then, I, I I'm perfectly happy to share. Yeah, I, I use them more for lighting things on fire than for seeing. I I pay a silver coin to see a, a cat woman juggle some torches. Okay, oh, we'll, uh, <laughs> break out the torches and let her do that because I gave all my money to Dern in the Yawning Portal. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I, 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 I'm going to have to make a wisdom check. Uh, wisdom check. Oh. What, what did that roll? What did that uh, oh. 20. Okay. So I do have the presence of mind to go uh, Maybe outside so you don't. Now, she didn't say they had to be lit. I'll light them if you want. What no. could go wrong? Oh, that come on. Like, fun. There's. I'm not going to pay to see you juggle a torch that's not lit. Right. I I can totally understand that. I mean, I like them better lit. Maybe outside so hey. we don't burn down the first general store that we tried to get some information. Uh, yeah, I actually I think I would appreciate that because uh, yeah, kind Let's of fond not of my start our here. adventuring career with a death bounty on our head. All righty. So I'm perfectly happy to go outside and light three torches and do, like, an acrobatics check to see if I actually juggle them. There is not a single torch... Sure. A single picture of a torch anywhere in any of my images and maps. That's very strange. Theater of the mind! So Bella, she she pulls out the torches and she like lights them up with um I think she has a tinder box or something. Oh yeah, I've got a tinder box. Lighting is no problem. Yeah. So, so are you lit. actually going to not do an unlit trial first? Oh, of course not. No, she's <laughs> gonna go right into it. All the way, but we're outside. Nothing's gonna catch on fire, I don't think. Bella, would you please roll me an acrobatics check? Sure. <laughs> In proper anime fashion, Dorian reaches behind him and pulls out a bowl of already popped popcorn and just starts munching away. <laughs> I'll be damned. I threw a fire. Ba blasted a thing I ever did see a cat juggling lit torches. Isn't it fun? If I knew what video cameras were, I could make a fortune. Maybe you could draw a picture and show your friends. It can't go viral that way. We don't have internet here. There's pictogram. Do we okay, got it. That's or... pretty freaking cool. Yeah, we get no reception down here anyway. The real problem, though, with juggling blazing torches is stopping. Uh, I'll make it two silver pieces if you can stop without burning yourself. All right, here comes another acrobatics check. <laughs> Whee! Well, you know, that may be some of the best two silvers I ever spent. Oh, wow, I'm rich again. 
Alright, so I go ahead and buy ten torches. Two silver pieces. I can rub them together. <laughs> also, uh, ten days of ration, a, rep, a hemp and rope, 50 foot tinderbox, water skin, candle, federal bag, that kind of thing that we don't have with us already. D didn't those come with your explorer pack? It did, it did. I'm just saying, I'm not sure if this is get that stuff or what. Yeah, not everybody got the Explorer pack. Mm. That's a very fair, fair point. I did. I, I have Silk Rope. I also gave myself 20 arrows. I hope that's okay. I assume that's okay. Mm -hmm. And a Boomerang. I have a Boomerang. I'm just trying to figure out... Oh, here we go. This is how I do it. What Taking a metagame lesson from Bori, I'm going to buy two more sets of clothes. I'm trying to figure out how the heck to assign SP. Nothing I do is working. I just typed it in on my sheet. Yeah, was it the inventory um, or the party sheet on the inventory just, tab? You but just I just, it? Yeah, you could do that there. I'll take it off my character sheet's treasure. Yeah, I don't actually have any. I just sort of gave myself the basic level one equipment and called it done. I'm currently carrying 84 pounds of gear with a maximum of 180. So I think I think I have the exact weight of gear right now, and that includes my my boomerang and my conch shell. Yeah, I absolutely cannot figure out how the heck to assign. It's just put it as a regular inventory item, not as money. It's in the chat though. No, you got it. it, it uh, party went to Bella and two uh, silver pieces, and it says you distributed the assigned items to the party. So you. Yeah, but they're in. It's in as items, not as uh, money. That's but okay. She we'll can, remember. She it. Can... You you added well, it. Well, over... that'll work. I made a yeah. note. Yeah. So over on the inventory tab, over on the left hand side is the parcel for coins, which is where you would assign money and then the items is on the right hand side so you put it in the right hand side as opposed to the left hand side oh i did put it in the left hand side but i couldn't figure out how to assign it oh wait ah. let me try this well the coins doesn't yep. have an assign uh, as an assignment it's just yeah i mean i tried there. putting two sp in the parcel coins and then dragging it over to parcel and it just makes it four four sp instead do I drag Keep it on down? juggling, we'll be rich before yeah, dawn. Every yeah, every time I try to, to move it, it just duplicates it and makes it four instead of, instead of two. Probably better okay. for Bonnie to just type it yeah. in her treasure. Yeah, I think the other thing you could do is just open up her character sheet and just type it in directly, too. Yeah, yeah. I know she yeah. just did that. That's, and by the way, Satan, did you give yourself any gold? I did not. I, I started as level one, I figured basically mercenary cook. I don't actually have much in the way of gold on me, but I did equip myself you know, with basic level one equipment within reason and just called it done. Your your background didn't assign you any gold? Because normally there is. With your... Well, I, like I said, I had a hard time getting my background and stuff in, in uh, Fantasy okay. Grounds. I, I think um, I, look it I've, up. I've always seen it's either, either uh, five, five gold is usually the smallest amount they have. Yeah. But, uh, I didn't, like but I didn't buy it was all pretty basic. Arrows, a backpack, a small bag, federal candle, clothes, hand axe, leather, longbow, uh, manacles, you, you have mess kit, GP. rations, rope, tinderbox, torch, and water skin. You know, figured basic stuff there. And then I would just call it done. If we get any coin along the trip, we'll just take it. So, if that's okay, but I'm up for whatever. So. Yeah, Outlander is 10. 10 gold? Uh -huh. uh, let's say I spent all but Please. two of it, so I'll call myself two gold. Whoa, that's big money. Yeah, so I mean, you know, give us give us a bill for, uh, well, at least for me, for uh, ten rats, ten uh, ten rations. <laughs> ten, <laughs> okay, you want ten rats, ten rations, and what else? Oh, uh, just just ten rations, ten torches, and a bedroll. Okay, uh, that's gonna be four gold. That'll work. That's awful, Steve. What about two gold? Sure. I mean, business has been pretty slow. 
place has a bad reputation ever since those kids disappeared. Dan, I give him two gold. If you missed it in in the uh, chat, there I purchased two travelers' clothes at two gold, according to the player's handbook for uh, four. Unless he wants to upcharge me. With... Uh, that works. Also, uh, Silver likes to point out that the anti-haggling club isn't working out. So... <laughs> well, you know, I mean, business has been. This is not the greatest place to do a lot of business to begin with, and those kids going missing, it's gotten even scarcer around here. So right now, he's kind of glad to sell anything. So are we ready to... Venture uh, forth? Sure. I think oh, so. Oh, wait. Uh, just, to, just to clarify a little point here... Uh... This, uh, the son of Citadel, which is, uh, seven miles from Oakhurst, uh, you want to maybe, uh, point me in a, in a direction? I just for... walk out here to the village, just follow the old road, the old road starts here, just follow the old road, believe it, when you get to the Citadel, you'll know it. Alright, so seven miles up the, the, old, the old road. Yep, I mean, it starts here, there's only one direction you can go. All right, you tell Lady Ukulele we'll have our kids back in. Oh, Lady Ukulele, don't call her Ukulele. Uh, you know who I was meaning. Yeah, I do, but man, she does not like it when people call her by the wrong name. Well, she won't know unless you tell her. No, I wouldn't tell her. Okay, so that's, uh... And if you want to keep talking while your DM tries to find any kind of map at all that looks like it could be the old road, feel free. So let's, let's certainly not be immediately done and say that I was just about to walk outside the door because the DM's looking for a map. Okay, so yeah, let's just share, actually, let's just, actually is let's no just share a couple more boogers, you know, just... <laughs> there the, actually the is no, no map in here that, that really fits the old road, which kind of surprises me because it's really very complete otherwise. But I'm just going to, this is by no means, the old road is a very winding road that kind of winds along the edge of a ravine. Well, you know, I guess this could be the old road, kind of. It's just a very, very windy road. It doesn't have to be seven miles as the crow flies, right? <laughs> Boogers with a bug pair, a memoir by Dorian Elliott. <laughs> uh, you might have to... Uh, are we going to need a, 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 a new blog for Sunless Citadel 2 so you can actually write this? I might. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, well, the old road does pass to the east of a narrow ravine. Uh, how long do you think you guys spent haggling with that bugbear? Uh, as long as it took for the dungeon master to mysteriously put the picture of the old road. I mean, this this could come into play later. I'm I'm going to figure, you know, you might have looked around at the town besides the haggling, so I might have juggled some more. You you might hour, have juggled. Some I, juggled. I don't know, hour or two hours total in town, probably. Okay, yeah, so yeah, we got there at noon. Get out at two. Kind of. Okay, so it is two o'clock. It is winter time, so we're gonna say the sun sets at about five. Yes. Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. So here is the closest thing I can come to a map of the old road. We're going to assume the ravine is off to the eastern edge of the map. Because I don't have a map that really looks like the old road. Which makes me sad. I'm trying to view as much as this as possible. It's just not working very well. Are there any trees alongside the old road? Uh, well... Basically, at the... Let me read to you what it says here. I honestly have no idea. Oh, that's when you actually get there to the end. So, never mind. Basically, it just passes to the east of a narrow ravine. Uh, the old road skirts the Ashen Plain, a lifeless area. Ooh, it sounds like no trees. It does sound like no trees. There might be one every every so often. I mean, you know, even... even... 
The over well, it oh, it does it. say overgrown, but I'm guessing it's like overgrown with brush and stuff like that. It's pretty desolated. Yeah, on the one hand it says it skirts the ashen plain and it's lifeless, on the other hand it says it's overgrown. Ah. The overgrown old road winds through rocky downs near stands of old growth oak and past abandoned farms. So we've got some conflicting descriptions here. So let's assume there's some trees here and there. So not lined with trees, but every so often. There's a tree, there's a tree. Any running water or any any signs of running water? Like rivers or I'm going ponds. to say no. You're basically between desolation or impenet impenetrable trees and ravine. So, just just to out of character, get some clarification. Bellu, you are the first ever cat that likes water. <laughs> I love water. No, that's such a misnomer. I mean, I don't know where people got the idea that cats don't like water. Maybe little teeny cats. But to Boxy, some of us, my village is on the shore from the land I come from. Everybody lives near the beach. We're fishermen. Fisher cats. Fisher cats and sailors. I Fisher love, feline. I love the water. I love the sound of the ocean. And uh, now I'm just having a vision of some sadistic uh, fisherman that's not a Tabaxi, like holding a fishing rod with yarn hanging at the end of it with a fish hook on it to catch himself some cats. <laughs> Cat. <laughs> Don't snag your yeah. pole yarn. Pole all, yarn. The all the Tabaxi kids love to play with pole yarn. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to have any cat folk in here, but I may have to change my mind. Um, <laughs> it, it, you should have totally busted into every day as a winding road children. You really do not want me singing. Uh, I asked about trees. I was thinking, like, maybe every mile or so along the road, if there was a tree, I might try to climb up it and see if I saw any sign of the citadel in the distance. Because uh, I'm used to climbing well, up masts and stuff on ships. Without giving too much away, let me say that climbing a tree would not really help you find the citadel. Okay. For one very important reason, which I'm not quite ready to tell you yet. It can only be found when the sun's not around. That's why it's sunless. So oh, that one thing. No, that's not it. I mean, it kind uh, of is it, but that's that's not the reason I'm thinking of. So with a uh, couple of us being wildernessy types, uh, mm -hmm. I'm assuming uh, seven miles on a relatively well kept road, uh, we should probably be able to make it by sundown. That's kind of my Dorian's expectation as we'll get there make camp outside and then kind of poke around and see what see what's what maybe oh well, remember it's an overgrown road it's not in great repair true but I'm still i mean why you're no, we're just doing a survival role well just for general because i am a survivalist you know an outsider and all that it seems like i might well be able to because I, I am going to ask use you that guys to my advantage to, uh, there will be a point where i'm going to ask you guys to do that but this is not it oh okay but if, but if we've only got seven miles and we've got three hours, I mean, we could make a big, a good thing. Actually, again, maybe not chills. seven, but you could, I, I think we could easily get to five without uh, without too much trouble. There we go. Yeah, I was just thinking that if I was assisting, you'd get the, the boost. I'm no, as a gnome survivalist, I get uh, advantage in all wisdom checks. I thought it was wisdom saving throws. I thought. Let me, let me get educated. Oh, you're right. Saving throws against magic. Okay. Anyway, this ravine that uh, is skirted by the old road runs for several miles in either direction. I would say the average depth and width are about 30 feet, so you really don't want to fall down it. So basically, there's no safety guards and well, it's, I mean, it's not, it's kind of skirting it, but you've got like a good, you know, you're not, if you slip and fall off the trail, you're not going to tumble into the ravine at the point where you're at right now. There's a lot of like underbrush and stuff. Uh, so, like, if you looked at a map, 
the road kind of looks like it runs along the ravine, but as you're actually walking, you're not in danger of tumbling over it at this point. Unless Dorian accidentally shoves Finnick. He'd have to shove him a good 20, 30 feet. Yeah, I'm not that close. A- yeah. Accidentally, in quotes, yes. Accidentally, yeah. <laughs> accidentally, That's right, I get that, ax, <laughs> yes. You can just call me Finn if you want. So you are traveling along this ravine, or along this road, with a ravine to your east. No, the ravine is to your west, because the old road passes to the east. My other east, my other west. You could just use left and right. <laughs> That'd probably be easier. That, that's no, probably okay. true. Okay. Okay. The, the ravine so, is on your left, but I mean, as roads go, I mean, you're not that far. It's not like you're teetering on the edge, but, you know, you're you're aware of the ravine being there, and you're you're glad of having a little bit of space. It is very rough and rocky going. Not a lot of people use this road. It is all overgrown. It's got tree roots and rocks and, you know, weeds and thorns and things like that. So you're really not making great time. How how far does it look like? Or do we... Actually, that's one thing. With Wanderer, we know exactly... We have an idea of how far we've gone. We have total recall of terrain. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I have a pretty good sense of where I am. I also am a natural explorer. So difficult terrain doesn't slow my group's travel. My group cannot become lost except by magical means, et cetera, et cetera. But to the ex- it doesn't necessarily need to all apply here. When it, even when I'm engaged in another activity while traveling, I remain to danger. When I'm traveling alone, I can move stealthily at a normal pace. Well, I've heard that Pretty normal walking speed is about four miles an hour. I don't know what it is in, in D&D. I've heard regular normal walking speed is about four miles an hour. Does that sound right for D&D? Yeah, uh, and that's on, like, you know. There's actually a chart in the DMG, if I remember correctly. Is there? It's fine, though. But yeah. I'm thinking here you're not going to really get, you know, that's assuming a good road. Let us and look. A... <laughs> it's in Foxling throwing range. <laughs> and like I said, it is winding. The terrain is difficult. There's like you know, potholes and rocks and the occasional, you know, you're passing through some, some old forest. You're going to occasionally come to a tree that you've either got to crawl under or climb over. I'm estimating that you can do maybe two miles an hour. Okay. Okay. That's, that's reasonable. Uh, just so you know, I just did a quick Google search and uh, on the D20, they have a fast pace is four miles an hour and normal pace is three miles an hour and slow pace is two miles an hour. So there you go. So good call. Yeah. So two miles an hour sounds about right. So with three hours to go until sunset, that would put us about six miles down the road if we travel the entire time. Okay. So... Basically, you are walking and seeing a lot of desolation. Natural desolation or like war type desolation? Ah. Uh, Magical desolation? Or? Yeah, there's something in here. I'm, I'm looking for something in particular. And I'm not seeing it. Let me just see. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask you to roll me. Ah, it's not in here. Maybe it's in the PDF. I would like an intelligence check from anyone who wants to make it. Uh, you want an intelligence roll, or you want like an investigation, or what you're looking for? An arcane? Well, actually, history is what I'm looking for, but I'll okay. take intelligence. Check. Oh, not for me. Satan, nothing. Satan, I'm sorry. Kirk and Dorian, you guys remember hearing something about this. That a long, long, long time ago, a dragon named Asher Dalon rampaged through the area. 
and that is what has cre created all of this desolation. A dragon named Asher Riz something. Asher Dylan. Again, I didn't make the name. I don't know if that's the way it's intended to be pronounced. A S H A R D A L O N. Oh, a Shardalon. A Shardalon. Oh, okay. okay. Sure. Asher Dylan, a Shardalon. Oh. Sure. Anything oh, else? no, there's a, a whole module called the Wrath of a Shard. Uh, oh, good to know. So, but yeah, with it's... my intelligence of 10, I don't. I just know it was a dragon. That That's it. Dragon did some stuff. Yeah, well, that's all you need. That's not really, you know, at this point, it's not super pertinent to the storyline. But depending on how long this goes, it may become so. By the way, the Ashardalon mini is epic. <laughs> don't don't even get me started on minis. Too many unpainted minis. Oh. Too little time. Oh, mini? I thought you said movie. No. Mini. The mini that's like the size of a Pepsi. Can. <laughs> oh, it's not. Yeah, a lot of dragons are. So you are walking and walking and walking. And this is starting to sound a bit like Cobalt Kindergarten, even though it's not. And you've walked about six miles, and you realize it's getting pretty dark. Would you like to press on, or would you like to make camp? Uh, dark in winter. Mm. Right, what do you, what you... Press on if you guys want, we should only be about a mile away. Yes, but remember, you're only moving at two miles an hour, and at the best of times, and now it's dark. Oh, oh, I get that. I, I can see. To a range. Like, I'll be fine, but he's don't the one pulling everyone around. else. Yeah, don't put me in the front of the party, but, you know, I can light a torch and we can, we can Yeah, if we can get to the Sun of the Citadel by evening, that would be good. Or at least a good place to camp near it, perhaps. Well, uh, the... I would like to point out, though, that, you know, while you can see with the torch, so everything else for three or four miles can see you with in the dark. That's true. And if they said there was some ugly stuff on this road. Uh, well, they said in the, in the Citadel, so they didn't necessarily say on the road. But hey, it's up to you. You no, want to make camp anyway. I, I thought like... he said. Check my notes here. I thought he said there were kobolds and, ki and goblins on the road there. Who knows what's going to be found inside the city? Oh, when you said ugly stuff, I thought you meant dogs or gnolls. Well, yeah, kobolds, you know, to be fair, dogs aren't ugly, but I get what you're saying. Well, let's put it this way. Kobolds and goblins both will compete with you for rat. Oh, my. <laughs> so are we talking about trying to get there tomorrow and just find a place to camp now? Is that what you're talking about? That's the discussion. Camp now and travel in the morning, or drop, press on and get there. Well, well, we could definitely sneak in better at night. So let's just go. I don't like suggestion. waiting around, but if this is our last opportunity to camp underneath the sky, I kind of like to camp underneath the sky. I'm just putting some All tokens right. on the map to show you where Oakhurst is, and that's the little O at the bottom. And this is just like general on the map. Uh, and this passage here up the northeast north on the east side we're just going to assume that's blocked i'll just put a big okay hole. you know i do have a hooded lantern which will cut down on the peripheral as far as who can see so that would basically just kind of shine the light in front of us so anybody in front of us might be able to see it but not like behind us or off to the sides so i can that's do a good that idea um, with our, our natural explorer -y stuff do, do we know exactly or an idea, like, are we four or five miles along this seven-mile journey? Are we two or three? No, she um, said about six. You're about uh, six Oh, about miles. six? Oh, uh, okay, so yeah. That's you guys, perfect. I'm going to drag you onto the map here. You guys are... I didn't know we were that close. If we're that close, yeah, let's just push up. And this is just, like, rough estimate. I mean, you're, you're still, you know, at least, especially with it being nighttime, uh, even with dark vision, it's pretty... Oh, hey, Thotger, thanks for watching. Leave a torch on the road when you pass. That's not a bad idea. So a voice is... from the ether gives us suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Well, you are allowed to watch Twitch chat. I just oh, the, uh, I'm uh, yeah, I'm watching chat. I have the the stream paused, so I can't see anything. It's just a black screen, but I have chat in there going. Oh no, you pop you pop the chat out so you can so you can you know have your uh, stream minimized. Either way, so I'm thinking if if we're going to maybe sneak in, just doing it at night is the best. I am pretty stealthy, so I'd like to get there towards evening. We most of us have dark vision, and one of us could sleep in the dark. And we can just sort of set up camp near that place and see the comings and goings and perhaps even just break in and take the kids right away. That would be oh, nice I doubt question. about breaking in and taking the kids right away, but I would agree with uh, setting up camp kind of outside in, in, in view of the city. Sure. I mean, if we're only a mile away, let's just finish the road camp and you know, then uh, maybe we'll, we'll case the place a little bit from the outside, you know. Yes, there's no need to wait around here. Send uh, the the sneaky types around to look at things while everyone else kind of huddles and bees bees quiet. That's good or English. Um, stays quiet. Why is it not letting me drag this where I want to? All right. So it sounds like we uh, press on. Oh, I think I know why. Give me just a sec here, because I am looking for something that I am not finding. As long as it's not just so you know, dragon, oh. we're fine. Yeah, I found it. Actually, who why is, is it only putting a me. push pin on there? I don't want the push pin. I want the whole thing. Oh, I think I know why. <laughs> I shouldn't have laughed so easily. Okay, so you are pressing on. It is after dark now. That means we can cuss, right? Sure. I, of course, light my light my hooded lantern. And these blocks are a lot more than five feet, just so you know. But, you know, this was the map I had. So you might want to, like, bunch up a bit more. Or... I don't know if I can set the grid to actually, yeah. I think it would be too much of a pain to try to set the grid in such a way that, you know, each block would be divided into smaller blocks of five feet. Yeah, no, I, th I think I think it's fine. We're just kind of, you know, general formation type thing. Abstract map is fine. Uh, also, uh, Kirk wants to know if there are any rocks on the ground because he needs to gather some if they walk as they're there as they are walking. rocks and stones of all sorts all over the ground but here's the thing it's after dark and the twig blades are out so i would like everyone to roll for initiative Ooh, trees they dun, won't dun, still dun. climb them Oh dear, my initiative. And you guys can see the twig blades, yes? Yes. Uh, yeah, four of yep. them. Yep. Oh, and it finally actually rolled initiative the way I wanted it to roll initiative. Yay! <laughs> okay, twig blades number four is going to go first. Why isn't he popping out I for me? don't see them in the combat tracker, however, just so you know. Whoops. We shouldn't see them in the combat tracker. No. Have before. Well, no, we're not supposed to, though. Because it's it has their hit points and their initial... No, no, it, 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 never show, it never showed their hit points or anything, but it, it just showed it showed them, so it showed how they, uh, you know, the order of uh, comp. I haven't... I'm, I'm with Kirk. I haven't seen them before. Okay. There we go. No, I remember when we were running uh, Witch in the Woods, you know, we, I, I saw the order of combat in the combat I, tracker that was. 
and also I don't with know, the, yeah the i don't know art. how to show you that without showing you their hit yeah, points no problem and I don't uh, there's a visibility it. section oh, in no the worries, no worries. for you even uh that'll allow the enemies to be displayed in the combat tracker for those that purpose like i say for purposes of knowing who attacks when hmm. etc cetera, etc cetera. uh i'm really not seeing it so i'm just going to that's fine okay so twig blight number four is going to attack the person directly in front of it with its claws okay for some and reason totally one of them missed. disappeared I'm only seeing three now. Oh, there he's back. And he's going to totally miss. Finnegan, you're up. Alrighty. I am going to cast a firebolt at uh, Twig Blight number four. That is a miss. Got anything else? Nope. And I don't know what everybody's bonus actions are, so... Okay. I Sighting. basically don't get a bonus action until level 2. Ah. Yep, yeah, level 1 here, it's pretty straightforward. So everybody does right. one thing and then we move so on. So it is, yeah, well, uh, so yes, I am going to... Let me zoom in just briefly so I can get a better sense of what's going on. All right, so I'm up. I've got my leather and all that sort of thing. Or were you already asleep at this point? No, we hadn't camped yet. We no, pressed you were on. Yeah, we were going we to just, press on. Okay, so I am going to uh, pull out my hand axe and chop. Axe, that axe, is axe. a hit on Twig Blight number four. Timber! And believe it or not, that is heavy damage. All right. They're a little wimpy. Well, we were a little wimpy too. And uh, that for movement, I am going to disengage to put myself behind here. I assume you're there, Dorian. And I will actually disengage oh, yeah. now that as is a an movement action. Attack of opportunity on Twig Light. Nope, 24? because I use a disengage action. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, the purpose of disengage is to specifically the attacks of opportunity. Captain Kirk. Apparently goes Everyone cuckoo. Everyone a superhero. Everyone a Captain Kirk. It does not say that. It says they're immune to being blinded and deafened. But one would think they would not be able to be poisoned. Yeah, except this is 5e. So, and they have simplified things quite a bit. So, if you want to try to poison them, knock yourself out. I mean, plants do get diseases. Twig blight actually sounds more like a disease than an NPC. And remember, the botanical laws that apply to orchids don't apply necessarily to, to sentient animated ones that walk around and try and club you in the <laughs> uh, they're trying to quell you, not club you. Uh, he Close failed enough. his save, so go ahead and roll damage. Or whatever. Is it damage? Oh no! The twig blade is poisoned! That was on twig blade number one. Let's see. Okay, that takes care of twig blade number one. Like I said, they're kind of wimpy. Twig blight number three. Where is Kirk? Do -do -do, there's Kirk. Twig blight number three. Who killed my brother? I'm going to move around here. Oh, and take his leaving? dreaded claws. Wait, Hang on. Before he, before Dorian he gets there. Would get a, Dorian would get an attack of opportunity. He's leaving oh. my melee range. Okay. So, oh, yeah, he's. I hadn't thought of that. Okay, Dorian, take your attack of opportunity. I will happily do so. Hold on. Da, 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 da. With an unraged axe. Axe, axe. Who's got the axe? That is a hit. Ooh, that's a great axe. 
Oh yeah, this guy's it's got better some than so so X. That's right. <laughs> He's got some boo. Rolls away. But it's still enough. How could he be? Wait, was he damaged already? I don't remember seeing Twig Blight number three get damaged. No, he wasn't. But but he just took four points and. Oh, one plus three four. Uh, well, you lucked out there. Twig Blight number three is a goner. And now, Dorian, you get an actual turn. Yay! As my bonus action, I would like to enter a nerd rage. <laughs> Let me mark this off on my sheet. There we go. One nerd rage. Approach twig blight number two. And, oh, man, it deleted my raged great axe. Son of a biscuit. Oh. <laughs> biscuit is safe. Well, you actually didn't get hit because, uh, I wanted to say Bory. Dory. <laughs> Dory and Bory. Dory. Uh, that is it. <laughs> Dory and Bory. Yeah, his, his next one's going to be Ori. <laughs> well, no, for, for, the record, for the record, I didn't name this character. You have Bonnie to blame for that. I didn't think of that at all when I made that suggestion. <laughs> so you have hit Twig Bite number two for... Uh, well, hold on. Let me temporarily add this. It's not really going to matter. Oh, yeah. I'd have to roll negative two for him to survive at the parent. Oh, yeah. Twig blight number two is a goner. Bella, mouse pouch, full belly. What would you like to do? Well, I'm going to move a little bit. I'm disappointed Here. that you didn't say, oh, look at the scratching post. Well, then I'm going to play with my food. <laughs> and I'm going to try to do a thorn whip on that Ooh. last little, that last little blight. Thorn whip. Is that you, a, you what exactly is that? Is that a spell? Oh, I didn't get to drag it there. It's a spell, yes. And if uh, I had can, been successful... No, you can drag it from the chat onto the creature if you don't roll up. From from the game chat. I don't think that's successful, though. You, you missed. Okay, well, nothing happens. He lives to fight another day. It would have been cool if something had happened, but nothing yes. happens. Okay, so... Twig Blade number four... Looks at Dorian... And doesn't like his looks at all. So he lashes out again with the claws. And he misses again. That's pretty sad. I'm not even wearing arm. <laughs> I just have clothes. And we're all thankful for it. Finnegan! <laughs> Woohoo! Alright, I'm gonna try another fireball. That's a hit. And he's almost certainly dead, but go ahead. Yep. And Twig Blight number four dies. Whoops. Is you have okay. made it through without taking a point of damage. Yet. Can we scrounge the remains of the Twig Blights for more torches? They're... Oh, you mean to make more torches? Because Yeah! Because, um, yeah, because we need lots of torches. I'm sure. Well, what would exactly would you make a torch out of besides the twigs? Well, that's what I was thinking. Twigs. We'd have, like, the, the wood off of the twig lights. Bundle some together. it kind of be like, um... Or just gather them all up for kindling. Yeah. Kindling would... I mean, I'm thinking, like, twig lights are going to be... You're ducking and they're blights. So, it's probably not going to be overly pleasant smelling smoke when they burn. Uh, you can certainly try it if you want to use Oh, I mean, I don't have to have torches. I thought it just might be helpful. Okay, and uh, if you would like to make torches or kindling out of the what's left of the twig blights, although one of them actually did get burned up. I can't remember which one that was. See, they burn well. Oh, that was Kirk, is, Kirk takes out one of his rocks. And cast light, and there you have a torch. 
I don't need a torch. I thought well, there's one person who needed a torch. He's got no, that's alright. We we got we got light now, so that's fine. Okay. All right, so we're still trying to press on to the edge of the citadel to make. Mm -hmm. Yes. So and keep them. I mean, like I said, this isn't exactly a five feet, and I didn't do that grid very well either. So I would say you are still. I mean, this happened about a mile from the citadel. It is still dark. You've got about a mile, which I would say is going to take you, because of the rough terrain, and it is a little, you know, even with dark vision, even with a torch, you know, if you're walking at night, even if you've got a flashlight, you're not seeing perfectly, so I'm going to estimate it's going to take you about 45 minutes to walk this last mile. And, what is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, each one of these squares, well, that's not right. Each one of these squares is about an eighth of a mile. And if you want to put yourselves in different order, go ahead. But Dorian should, feels as he should always be in the front. Okay, so you have moved an eighth of a mile. Anyone watching at home? 14 or higher? Nope, you move the first eighth of a mile and you're fine. Shall we collectively scooch again? Skip. Scooch, everyone scooch, scooch again. The sushi Everybody scooch? Everybody scooch up one more square. Ah. <sighs> Just keep scooching, just keep scooching. Roll for initiative. Do we scooch or do we roll first? You roll. Okay. I'm glad I rolled better on those juggling the torches than I have on initiatives. Guess what? Basically, it said you have a chance anytime you're. Well, I can tell you this now because you pretty much figured it out anyway, I'm sure. Uh, round one. Cool. It automatically reset. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, basically, anytime you move, you're going to have a chance at running into more twig blights because they're everywhere at night. Kirk, you are up first. There are four angry twig blights looking at you. Hey, Fargonaut. Thank you, you for being here. You killed our cousin. Ah, the twig blight makes it save. And it oh, shakes wait. a couple twigs at you and goes, neener, neener, neener. Twig Blight number four. Was that the one you, you casted it to? Twig Blight number four is going to move up here and look at Dorian and go, Wee! I claw you! And Twig Blight number four is going to miss, and all of his twigs are going to droop sadly. Whoop! Oh. <laughs> Bet again. It's wait, wait. Light. Sad twig bone. <laughs> that could come out really bad, actually. Never mind. Uh, it, that let's let's redact. That did not sound good. I'm thinking what we'll do is uh, get you to the Citadel and then, then wrap it up for the night. Yeah, that's kind of what I think we were thinking, too. All right. Uh, so I'm going to throw a fireball. At which one? Um, uh, I'm going to actually throw it on blight number two. Light number two, come on down. Oh, that's a hit. Two damage. He is... Oh, actually... 
two plus two. That's strange. Oh wait, was did he already take damage? No. Well, if they take extra he from had, fire, he had damage the last time. Did you not reset him or something? Or did he have? Uh, does he have more because it's fire? Okay. Uh, he shouldn't have more because it's fire. Maybe he just didn't get reset. I used this. Uh, that's probably it. I used the uh the same encounter. So, yeah, he's got two damage. So he is still very heavily damaged, but he's not actually dying yet. Dorian. All right. Smash all the things. Smash, smash. Hey. Smash all you're, the things. You're channeling tuna. And when I say uh, tuna, I mean my dwarf barb raised by orcs, not that little fanged chihuahua. Ew. No, I was channeling somebody else, but that's okay. It just sounded like tuna. <clears throat> or possibly carb. Don't call tuna carp. She doesn't. Well, actually, tuna wouldn't know the difference. Go ahead and call her carp. I said cargon. Oh, because my my barb also says smash all the things, smash, smash, smash. That's kind of her tagline. No, actually, actually, I was channeling uh, a a, sign, a scene from uh, Game of Thrones. Actually, I have never watched it, Dorian. That, in case I didn't tell you, that is a hit. All right. And, I guess um, there is no sunlight in their plants, so theoretically, you can say they're already halfway to dying. Uh, well, technically wah, wah. everything is dark. Right, anyway, um, I'm assuming <laughs> this has been more than a minute to travel the last eighth of a mile, so I'm going to assume my nerd rage is gone. And uh... oh, oh, I didn't put my bonus to Damage to twig blight number four. Instant death. Status dead. He shatters into splinters twig? and sprays everybody. Splinters, hell. He he basically just turned into a big pile of sawdust and blew Kindling. off in the wind. Yeah. Nah, sawdust. Mulch. Ooh, yes, mulch. Bad. Twig blight number two. That's this guy, this wounded guy here. He's, He's gonna, gonna need move a beer up. And he is going to take another swipe with his... Whoa, why did he get two rolls? That didn't make sense. Oh, I have to... I get it. Okay. Ha, <laughs> I've been rolling them the wrong way. Uh, anyway, he missed. Twig Blight number one is going to come rolling up here to Sighton. All that does is save me movement. Huh, that one did only roll one. And miss. Now Sighton. it's my turn. It is I... your turn. I, pull I out would my tell you to axe. throw some boiling soup on them, but you sent all that back to the camp. It's true, but I did have my hand axe, which was already out and ready for more chopping. And Saitan drags his hand axe up and waves it around and goes, ah, chop! And chops nothing but air. Okay. <laughs> Song chop. Bella. Alrighty, I'm gonna try what I tried before. I'm gonna move a step back, and then I'm gonna whip my thorns. I whip my thorns back and forth. I whip my thorns back and Whee! forth. That is a hit on Twig Blade number one. Now, when Thorn Whip is successful, I'm gonna do the damage, but it also will pull that Twig Blight ten feet closer to me. Oh. So I do three damage, okay. three and then the damage. twig blight moves three close to me, and I think that, does that cause an attack but, of opportunity? No, because it didn't move out, well, actually, from Dorian. Out of mine, from Dorian, it? yeah. Yeah, from Dorian. So... So Dorian gets an attack of opportunity? Yep. Okay, and that is a hit. Good night, sweet prince. Yeah, he's, he's gonna be a goner. He's dead. That was number one, right? Yes. Making mulch. <laughs> Making mulch. Twig blight number three. As long as it's not bacon mulch. Hey, I don't know. Bacon, bacon mulch should, is the first. It's going to move no, up no, here. No, no. Bacon should never be treads. Yes, but mulch, no. There would have well, to be a like a a pig in the tree. Well, I'm just saying, if you make bacon mulch, that's the first step in making bacon jelly. If 
I can only so do the party's that done now. <laughs> yes, oh, everyone that was is going to be that. a hit. Twig Blight number three takes its vicious long woody claws and swipes at Kirk and smacks him for four points of damage. Oh. Okay. Uh, do you really want to use that on a natural 20, though, dude? Kirk says he has a shield as a reaction. Yeah, but he says, do you really want to use that on a nat 20? But was it a natural 20? It just says it, it was. was a 20. It say oh, it was a that's a good point. We only see the total. Oh, yeah, it's a 17 plus 3. It's not a nat 20. He's, yeah, fair point. That's true. He wouldn't know that, so. Okay, so... So if you Do I re roll the damage? No, no, no. Uh, you would re-roll your attack, wouldn't you? So you roll your number, uh, or actually you don't re-roll it, whatever your number was, uh, you drag it over onto him again and see if it actually becomes a hit. Okay, so the twig blade actually rolled a 20, so with a 15, basically it needs, so if Kirk's AC is less than 15, Kirk's AC is 15. Uh, so no, no, the, the, yeah, the, the 20 that you have in the chat that you rolled for okay. him, you can just take oh, okay. from that chat and place it on him and see. Oh, that's good to know. It'll recalculate if you drag it That is it a over. hit. Yep. Cool. And yeah, and there so, it is. Defect. And there you, so you have four damage. So he still hit you. Yeah, I learned that watching one of the other uh, streams, and you just said, oh, you can just take it, and so when you have, like, one roll from multiple targets, you can still take that one roll and just drop it on the multiple targets to see what, for either damage or hitting or whatever. It's... Oh, that's nice. You have, Good like, fireball know. or whatever. But, yeah. Yep. Good to know. We're learning things. Yeah, it says attack 20 at Kirk Uthadar. Defensive effects plus 5 hit. So he still keeps his 4 damage. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. uh, but now you get a chance to get revenge. Kirk, you are up. God, I mean, twig. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy, twig. Okay, try and poison again on that dude who made his save. And mm. he is like poking you with his little twigs going. Neener, 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 neener. You ain't got no ice cream. <laughs> if he keeps poking him with those twigs, he won't have no eyes. Okay, Finnegan. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and cast Firebolt on twig number two. Let's see if I can't turn him into twiglets. That is a hit. And he's already in pretty bad shape. Yeah, he's gone. And uh, if we happen to have any uh, viewers from the UK or whatnot, they would know what twiglets are. Okay. Dorian. Well, mine just went bye-bye, so uh, I'm going to have to step over here, back uh, an eighth of a mile, and uh, stab this uh, twiglet number, th or twig blight number three. Stabity stab stab. <laughs> no. Twig blight number three goes, you guys have drag dice. Neener, neener, neener. Sighton. All right. I am Sighton going to. Burner. Uh, Burn not to get around. So one, two, three. And I will attack with my hand axe. Chop, chop, chop. And miss the gain. Uh, there are some whooshing sounds, and the twig blight stands there. And you didn't know it was possible for twig blights to laugh. This one, if he hadn't asked, would be laughing it off right now. Oh no! <laughs> that was so close to being a sixteen, too. Bella. It's like it's almost like I was chopping food. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, chopping at food. I thorn whip again. I whip my thorns back and forth. That is a hit. 
escape his mushrooms. <laughs> And, and I pull him. It doesn't uh, matter because me. you pull his dead body towards you before he dissipates into a pile of sawdust. I whip my thorns back and forth. <laughs> whip my thorns back and forth. Just visioning this Mortal Kombat fatality, like she just wrapped around his head and just <laughs> pulled the head off, and then explodes and bunch of dust. Yeah. And I'm going to or, move us up along a little bit here, and only make you roll an encounter, roll an encounter for you every. Let's see, that was eight of every quarter mile. So you can move two blocks forward, and I will roll an encounter instead of one. Root, root. Uh, move another one, because you were one block behind. And remember, these are not, you know... If you no, move... but we're, we're basically going back into the formation we were at, is all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, I, I moved, were you that, were you I that far ahead? Said... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's why I said okay. I moved backwards an eighth of them as a little... Joke. Yep. Basically, uh -oh. in combat, you're moving five feet when you move a square. When you're walking, you're moving an eighth of a mile when you move a square. So. Eh, no encounter there. Two more blocks. You have made it safely to the Citadel. Nice. Now, I am going to, honestly, I really don't see the harm in showing you the DM map. Well, maybe not. Do -do -do, where is the map I'm looking for? Oh, that's because I'm looking at NPCs. Oh, here we go. You have reached this ledge. You can see some stairs going down. Oddly enough, this is the only level there is. The next map is a DM-only map. So basically, when we meet again, you are going to be working your way down the stairs. Hey, Perkysaurus. Plus 5,000 points. There you go. Uh, you're here on this ledge, and it's down, down, down to Goblin... I mean, to... Uh, Sunless Citadel Town. <laughs> I'm not seeing a map. Oh, yeah, it might help to share it, huh? Yeah, I assume we are we are actually going to camp outside and uh, basically take a long rest before we head in. I am going to give you, yeah, I'm going to give you this ledge as a safe spot to camp overnight. We'll just assume that's a campfire. It's not really clear in any of the storylines or anything else exactly what that is. Yeah, it looks like a campfire, though. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give you that and find... Uh... Fun fact, those aren't actually rocks. Those are actually marshmallows. <laughs> Vegan marshmallows. It's rock candy. Dump a bunch of dead twigs, lights into the, okay. into the campfire. and You have had a long up. rest. It emits a musky odor as they burn, sure. That will only make dinner taste better. You know, you're probably right. As a matter of fact, I mean, it, 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 people like to think about barbecue and, you know, coals and all that sort of thing. But there's a whole bunch of other kind of things you could use, like hair, you know. I mean, sumac's a spice. Yeah. Twig blight probably is, too. Sumac is a spice? I don't know about that. Oh, yeah. It will not let me turn the grid off on it. Oh, let me try that again. I know so nutmeg is a spice, and that's poisonous if you eat too much of it, but... Uh... Sumac is part of Zaftar, a Middle Eastern spice blend. Uh, okay. Drop the Just knowledge bar. Or, <laughs> or a Kalashite spice blend. I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. So you just itch from the inside. Well, it's not poison sumac, it's just regular sumac. It's the nice sumac. Ah, gotcha. Like, like right. there's oak and poison oak. Yeah. So you can just arrange yourselves around the campfire however you would like. You'll notice I changed the ambiance to campfire, just so you, you know, oh, okay. feel the ambiance. You, you totally wigged me out there. I was like, my screen turned pink. I don't know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> there. If you want to move All yourself right, a little should... closer, Dory, Bori, whatever your name is there. Well, I almost named him Durian after the stinkiest fruit on the planet, but... 
Oh, yeah. I have never had durian fruit, and I really don't think I want to. I understand it smells awful, but it actually tastes pretty good. But somebody delicious. actually said it, it tasted awful. like it tasted like uh, wet socks, but you know everybody's got a different. I would not know what wet socks taste like, actually. You know, I'm would guessing, I, but they said I'm so. guessing that it probably tastes a lot like Satan's cooking. <laughs> it <laughs> might. It might be his special dish. Uh, I, I was going to say with uh... hey, RP Network, thank you. Yeah, the mood lighting in here is pretty cool. Yeah, you, you, oh, I never you, thought. You, I could have just changed it to night, too. I completely forgot when you were walking along. I should have changed it to night. Ooh. <laughs> nice. but right now, you've got a campfire, so you've got... I like the so way it just, like, as, fades in, too. As I'm eating rations, I'm going to cast a minor illusion upon it. This is something that I can do as a gnome here, and I'm going to make it look like a really nice dinner instead of rations. But if wait, anyone, wait, wait. if have... you offer a taste to anyone, they're going to know. Correct. They're going to know yes. right away. Yes. Is it, this is absolutely true. Yep. It, it, interacting with it reveals it as an illusion, but it is still an illusion. So if you choose to... I say something like, I found... The people have found that it helps sometimes to imagine it's different food when you're eating it. So I would imagine it helps here. most of the time to try to imagine it's different food when you're eating it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to serve my lovely rock hard, overcooked, dry, and stringy, and yet still so chewy rations. What were the rations the originally group? before they were dry and stringy and chewy at the same time? I don't know how I improved them. I'm not sure. I'd have to. Some some mysteries need to remain unsolved. I find it helps if they just sit in the backpack for a while. Do you have any recipes Yummy. for fish pudding? <laughs> oh, no. oh, if you get it, if you get me a fish, I will make a lovely pudding out of it. Oh, oh no, I love oh. fish pudding. Oh, this, hey, this, uh, that Kirk, comes from a Kirk Twitter says, conversation. Yeah, Kirk says he uses pressed digitation to add flavor to all the rations because he can chill and warm or flavor up to one cubic feet of non-living material for one hour. Oh. Nice. That I can right make now. it taste decent. That's nice. going to come in pretty handy with Satan's cooking. You can make it taste decent, it'll look better, and add it's, some, you know. Add some chili pepper to my rat. Fish pudding is resistant to press the digitation. Uh, I, I think that, that should be canon. Uh, I think that I, should be canon. Absolutely. Fish pudding is resistant. Why would you to... want to alter fish pudding? Because it's perfect. we're not all tabaxi. Oh, that's true. I mean, I'm, I'm sure to... your party mates are going to wish you were Tabasco when they eat much more of Satan's cooking. Tabasco? Tabasco, yes. That will mask the flavor of just about anything if you use enough of it. Very oh, true. that's not true. That that's spicy. not true. It adds flavor to things. It doesn't mask it. Well, it's no, no. It's wonderful, but if you have something that is absolutely horrid, you can put enough Tabasco on it and make it edible. I mean, Tabasco is very strong, yeah, I... so it will, I mean, maybe not mask the flavor, but at least overpower it. Believe yeah, me, I... Tabasco will overpower things. It, it, yeah, I, I challenge that on, on, on like things like liver and, uh, oh, oh. and squash. Oh, oh, see, if, if you were a good a mythical beast and watched Good Mythical Morning, um, you would be well aware that of, of the masking power of, of hot sauce on things uh, yes. as extreme as, uh, uh, what was it, boar testicles, oh, God. Um, deer eyeballs, oh. uh, blowfish brains. I mean, they've, they've okay, done... Okay, you're making fish pudding sound good. Yeah, By the yeah. way, the, uh, the, regarding... the, the covering power of hot sauce has, <laughs> has been... By the way, regarding the fish pudding, I do turn to Bella and say, you know, in my travels, I've actually seen an incredible fish pudding where they essentially took the fish. It was in a very cold climate. They hammered it flat and they buried it for about two years until it became sort of a gel-like substance. And then they made an amazing jello out of it. That sounds wonderful. I don't think I could wait two years for food, though. Kirk wants to know to warm it. To warm it up and ch or ch wait, I'm a seriously, should fish pudding be eaten hot or cold? The answer to that, Kirk, is unless you are a tabaxi or a tabby, you should not eat fish fish pudding. Period. The official recipe calls for it to be eaten chill. <laughs> Burnt squirrel with hair too. Thought <laughs> you're a good one. 
Oh, nice, RP Network. This is, was actually my first official DMing of a prepackaged module as opposed to a homebrew, and I've only done a couple of homebrews, so I'm still pretty new at this. So I've established that when it comes to camping, there's now a priority. Dorian will sit across from Satan because those rations are definitely suspect. That's an understatement. I mean, on the one hand, you don't have to worry about mold or dry rot, but, you know, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I think unless you like, like, really Cajun blackened toast, you probably will not appreciate Satan's cooking. Well, I mean, because you cannot get sick on anything that's charred black. That's my theory. Or Sorry, at least the I taste of there. charcoal is enough to make me pretty sick. And thank you, RP Network. <laughs> well, that's just because you're not, you know, you don't appreciate my forest <laughs> culinary <laughs> skills. So, what, so what type you're... of cuisine would you say that you specialize in? Healthy. All the food I eat keeps people <laughs> alive. That's really what it's all about is hopefully mostly keep i mean hopefully mostly yes hopefully everyone keeping people alive is what i do that's so conscientious of you thank you yep. so, <laughs> i'm telling you i'm going to start shipping Satan and bella <laughs> so so what you're saying is the smoke alarm is your your cure for your your cue for what it helps i tend to find that if if like raw meat tends to attract enemies and you know enemy creatures but if you cook it long enough they stop coming it's that delicious carbon smell yeah <laughs> i would kirk i was just going to you know bell tanner stuff <laughs> I, I was gonna go with Stella or, or yeah Stella Sila or, or Sila? yeah how, how would Sila. 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 i don't know i kind of like bell tan <laughs> so we've got our very first crossover uh, we expect fan fiction by next session and, and fan art by next session of the two uh yeah bo Definitely. both of them enjoying the the delights of fish pudding <laughs> a fulgren i think you can get me a couple pictures of that i would uh, uh yeah. Saiten would definitely eat fish um, if it was like a cultural initiative and trying to eat with a tabaxi might well be seen as a cultural initiative. So yeah, for sure. Well, yes, exposing so yourself be down to for cat it. people cultures, yeah. you're, you're going to want yeah. to do that. And, you know, if you're get to know Bella a little better. Bell hey, Dan. Bella seems to be pretty useful <laughs> in a fight as well. And That's... so far you're the party leaders. Yeah. I, and I've, I really do like eating a lot of raw food, but this whole cooking food thing is really exciting and new and interesting. <laughs> Saiten is not a leader. Saiten is a follower, clearly. He's not a leader. In Saiten terms saw of Bella whip her thorns back and forth, and man, yeah. that was it. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Yeah. So I just sent you all the, uh, sorry, Bonnie, you kind of got caught in the crossfire on that. We sent a uh, copy of the fish pudding. RP Network, oh, no. if you if you actually make that sketch and you would like to send it to evennote at gmail.com, I will make sure it make, makes it into the next stream. Oh, please do. I cannot wait for that. Which, by the way, uh, since we're doing kind of a rotating DM schedule for the uh, official D&D uh, &D night on DDO stream, then uh, we will have uh, next week a very special Thanksgiving episode. Uh, Jerry, do you want to say a little more about that? Yeah, that sounds fine. So yeah, next Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be having a special one-off in honor of the, in celebration, question mark, of the U.S. holiday. And uh, it's going to be a fun time. Let me give you a, a little taste. I'll be dungeon mastering it along with whoever happens to be around. I think we have a couple people here that are going to be here and enough folks are going to be able to show up on Sunday that we can just make this as a special one-off, basically one large encounter session. Normally one giant turkey is sacrificed to the horde in exchange for safety over a particularly grisly day of the year. This year, a devious entity placed the soul of the town's elderly grandmother into the turkey. This year, 
you face the horde to save the turkey. And that'll be next Sunday, 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, you do not want to miss this. I will be playing the turkey, and uh, people will be rolling up their characters and fighting off a horde of things, which will be described later. What do you call a grandmother turkey? A, a grand turker? Well, see, it has the soul of basically the town's no, a, mo a mother turker. You know, basically <laughs> the uh, you know the town's elder, basically elder grandmother, the 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 most important elderly grandmother in the town had it had her soul deviously placed in the turkey just as it was heading out the door to be sacrificed to the horde. So see, you need this to is save why the people turkey. Eat fish pudding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe if we make enough of that and offer that to the horde, they'll all, you know, die. Anyway, uh, you told me to prompt, uh, yes, pimp it, so that's what I just did. Absolutely, pimp it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, D&D &D Night is live on DDO stream uh, every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern and goes for anywhere from two to four hours. I'm trying to keep mine on the short side because I'm streaming DDO tonight. I normally start at 11 o'clock, but uh, Jerry, with your permission, I think I will start at 10 tonight. No! <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's nobody else who, who streams at this time, so I just thought, I've, I've got an early day tomorrow, so maybe start a little early, then I can get done a little early, and then I can get a little bit more sleep, which will be cool. Nice. And uh, so this campaign is going to be uh, coming back. In the future. I was just going to get it. Yeah, December yes. 16th will be the next time we meet our fearless adventurers. You have less than an... Well, you can cook it in less than an hour, and then you can eat it while we while we play DDO. Um, I actually haven't decided if you guys have any suggestions. You want to start flagging on Argo? I don't know if I'm flagged for Shroud on Argo or not. Yeah, order a pizza. So, yeah, I don't know. Ex did we already do Argo? Yeah, I think maybe we did. Um... I don't know. Hold on, I have the I have it right here. Uh, let's see. Next, the whoops, that's December. Uh, da, 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 da. December first is Argo. No, he says oh. our our didn't we already flag on Argo? Oh, that's an entirely different question. Yeah. Whoopsie. Yeah. For anyone who I'm doesn't know, uh, a couple of us DDO players, we are uh, doing Shroud Palooza every other Saturday. Next one will be December 1st. Uh, we're doing a different server every time. Next one will be on Argonessen. And what we do is run Shroud, Heroic Shroud. Uh, all levels welcome, no XP. We want to just get as many people as included as possible. We just run Shroud for three hours. Uh, we are usually getting about four runs in, and if we have time, uh, then in the very last, the fifth run, we usually don't have time to get the whole thing in, so we go to phase three. Everybody runs to the, we don't run water, everybody runs to that north 5x5 five five and starts dancing, and we wait for the rainbow wall to kill us. In other words, we get rainbowed. And we are doing this to raise money for Extra Life. We had originally uh, set our goal at $500. We're now, are we over $2,700? Yes, we are, yeah. Saturday. We are over $2,700, and the Standing Stone Games team as a whole is I believe op I know they're over twenty three. They may be pushing twenty four by now. And we are our little Shroud Palooza group is part of Standing Stone Games. So we're and what did you say? We're raising money for uh, Boston Children's, Children's Hospital. Hospital, and we are so far their number one fundraiser. Yep, absolutely. I got word from the Boston Children's Hospital on Friday that we are there. Uh, we've raised the most funds this year for the Boston Children's Hospital through the Extra Life program. That's pretty awesome. Woohoo! So, you know, due to that, is right here on oh. DDO stream. Like I said, next one is December 1st. That will be on Argonessen. And you can find out more at shroudpalooza.com. I can actually type that in chat because. Uh, say, can we use Moobot to pimp extra life while we're. Yeah, oh, yeah. That. I don't remember the Moobot command. I'll let Bobby do that. <laughs> I have Moobot on DDO stream. It is active. Of that there we go. Launcher, largely because I have to do more, and I'm not a big user of said kind of things. Yes, and shroudpalooza.com. No. Also, for Shroudpalooza, we are having a Shroudpalooza art contest. Uh, the deadline is December 1st for entries. Yes. So that is approaching really, really fast. That is now less than two weeks away. 
we only have a few entries. So we have and four it entries. It doesn't have to be good. It really make us laugh. Make us feel. If your three-year-old wants to sculpt Harry and Play-Doh, send us a picture. If you want to do an interpretive dance of Nimrisa beating the adventurers back to the crystal, send us a video. Uh, we had Dutiful Murdoch who crocheted a blanket in the colors of the prismatic wall and sent us a picture of that. Oh, Fulgrin is actually not a... Uh, Fulgrin did not make submissions. Fulgrin and Bonnie and I are not eligible because, you know, we're kind of doing the judging. <laughs> the yeah, a, haiku, a haiku was submitted uh, by your own relief comic relief. Comic relief, who is playing Finnegan here. Uh, I'm trying to think of the yeah, our name on Ar Orion or Orion or however you say. I did a really nice sketch of the, uh, her character in the veil. Oh my gosh! Yeah, so art has a wide range of meaning as far as this uh, contest goes. Did and... did you? mentioned Doug and I his was cover just about of... to and you cut me off. Doug Glendower, Oop. aka Alice Lane Garfield, a wrote a parody song uh to the tune of Total Eclipse of the Heart. And unfortunately I did not have the file of that to get it in with the last one, but I will I will definitely be showing it in two Saturdays. And Talira of Orion is the one who did the great Talira of Ar sketch. Orion, yes, that's who it was. I I could not remember her name, but it was a really nice sketch. Uh, it can be like I said, we don't care about your skill level. It's just uh, make sure it relates to the shroud somehow, and no more than PG thirteen, because you know we don't know what ages might be watching it, and we are going to showcase as many submissions as possible on the stream. So you know, we really don't want to see Harry and Lyrilith in a compromising position. If you get my meaning. Oh, even can you expand upon that? <laughs> I yeah. tell you what, if you, uh, if you, if you draw to... something, if you draw somebody, try to remember to put their pants on. <laughs> Look who's talking! Says <laughs> this from the person who drew Fulgrim without I pants. I say ironically. This is the pretend you're going to oh, show it you, to your Silver. grandmother, who may be trapped in the soul of a turkey next Sunday. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, and... Gobble gobble. Uh, Lord Silverhand did put the link to Doug Glendower's uh, Silk, aka parody song, in Twitch chat. I'll be putting a link to all of those entries so far up on shroudblizzard.com this week so people can actually see them. Because there's, there's two prizes. One of them is going to be some VIP time for Dungeons & Dragons Online, and the other one is going to be for some DDO points that you can spend in the DDO store. And one of the points, I think, is going to be random and the... Um, the VIP time is going to be uh, based off of uh, voting from people in the community. Yeah, and you know, oh, voting from people, not just us, the community. That that. Well, cool. we were going to pick the, the our four favorites. Oh, uh, but <laughs> if, well, that's kind of narrowed down, with, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but with the number of entries we have, I figure there's no point of us picking our favorites. It'll be fine to just have people vote between the entries we have. Maybe you know, everyone's get, like, waiting till the last four minute. more entries this week or something. I would love to get some more entries because I, I like putting them on the screen and you know. So your odds stuff. are pretty good for getting something. Let's Definitely. talk off the air. Would it, it? We could talk off the air, but it, if it would help to give a transparent PNG of Eritrikos, let me know. I think actually you sent me one of those. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. But if not, I, hey, absolutely. I'm always up for any kind of pictures of Harry. I'm just saying, if we're going to do uh, shroud fan art, having a Transparent PNG of Eritrikos might be useful. Oh, you mean, you mean for, like for to actually give to people who want to make their own fan art? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. yes, that's a good idea. Let's talk off the air. Okay. So I'm going to wrap this stream up for now and take about a 40-minute break. I will be back at 10, and we will be running something DDO on DDO stream in about 42 minutes. Uh, I'll wait and figure out what later. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again next week for the Thanksgiving episode. And Sunless Citadel will be back here on December 16th. And a just a real quick, actually just a real quick, uh, d d night is every Sunday night. Uh, there's also Patrick from DDO Cast and uh, Kevin running uh, to rescue Saba Jade. I have been doing on and off things. We've got, uh, I know Bonnie Bue is going to be taking over here in the new year. 
uh, some other folks. So we're going to be rotating Dungeons and Dragons people in and out. So that's every Sunday night, 7 to 10 p.m. right here on twitch.tv slash Stream, sponsored by Fantasy Grounds, who have the uh, most official licenses of any online software product. You can find out more at fantasygrounds.com. And you can get a free account, and which lets you play with people who aren't free. And uh, an ultimate will basically let anyone play. So that's something you can find out more about on fantasygrounds.com. We like their software quite a bit. Yes, if you are looking for a way to have friends scattered all around the four corners of the globe all get together and play D&D, this rocks. It really, really does. All right. That's all we need. Bye -bye. Okay, thank you everybody for watching. Have a great night.